um, the ethos in systems theory starts with the key leadership. So if the key leadership is struggling with each other in conflict, is fighting, it's viral. If they can't trust each other, it becomes contagious and it spreads throughout the entire congregation, right? In the contrast, if the key leadership loves each other, trusts each other, is not all thinking the same thing, but in their diversity, they're able to care for one another and live with one another. If they do that, that also is contagious. So you decide if the key leadership, and so your investment, we'll talk about this tomorrow morning, your investment has got to be within your key leadership. If they know how to love each other and care for each other um, in spite of differences, then that's going to be pervasive and people will catch that. Folk will not stay, pastors exactly right, why would they? People will not stay in a situation of conflict and toxicity. They just won't. I don't blame them. And you can feel it quickly when you come in. You can watch the passion of the peace, the warm stuff, if some people will not talk to certain other people. They just won't. And it's like, really? But aren't you people supposed to be trying to be Christian like Jesus? Seriously? Um, and so that's why that kind of behavior has to be named. Matthew 18 talks about this. If one person in the body is not able to live out what the body is being called to do, then the leadership goes with one other leader. Matthew 18 lines this whole thing out and says, then you talk to the person. If the person still cannot do this, then it may be time for them what? To be asked to leave the body for a specific period of time. Um, uh, the father of systems theory um, is Edwin Friedman, who's a Jew, uh, late Edwin Friedman, who's Jewish. And he said he was intrigued because he, would, he was teaching this stuff and he was going to several synagogues and talking about systems theory and toxicity. And he said, tell me about, so he's talking to the synagogue leadership, tell me about the persons who are really, really difficult and who are ruining your community. And right away, they're naming them, right? They all know who they are. And he goes, then tell me why you don't ask them to leave. And they said, the response, Edwin Friedman, uh, Rabbi Friedman said, the number one response was, well, that wouldn't be Christian. <laughs> and he said, uh, wait, excuse, excuse me? And they said, well, Rabbi, that wouldn't be Christian. He said, but, Okay, but we're not. <laughs> we're Jews. And said, so, oh, I know, but you know what that means. It wouldn't be nice. nice. It, and Jesus was always nice. nice. And so we have to be nice. and tolerate toxicity and meanness and bullies, etc. No, we really truly don't. There's a way to love them. And there's a way to say, we still abide with you, we still care for you, but we're gonna care for you outside of our community and we're gonna check in with you until you're able to come back in and then we will welcome you. But that kind of behavior is not accepted for us together. But it has to be done with great discernment. It's pretty powerful to watch and see. I've seen it done several times and it's pretty powerful. There are some persons who go from congregation to congregation um, with their toxicity and they try it out, right? And when they find a healthy congregation, it makes them crazy because they're like, this usually works. I can usually get in here and hook some people's emotions, but dang it, these people are way too self-differentiated. This is not cool. And they'll go someplace else.